transitioning, you know, kind of into zone coverage uh, and, and the fundamentals, I think this is where in Canadian football things get a lot different from the American game. And, you know, I was trying to break down whether it's CFL, it's mostly CFL clips tonight. Um, and there's not a ton of like the traditional cover three being played. Obviously the passing games are pretty advanced and um, present some challenges that cover three, especially with pro quarterback play. Uh, and pro receiver play is tough, but there's some clips here where the contours are pretty similar. Um, so I thought we'd just kind of roll through those, um, you know, kind of talk about cut and hold, right. Which is two basic, um, you know, calls that I think every, every team's got in their, in their play oh, yeah. capacity. So you kind of got both those contours in this clip. Do you want to just talk about, you know, cover three and, uh, and what those two cut and hold contours really mean? Mm -hmm. So like, even going back to high school, most of the time the calls are either man, cut hold or like some type of mix of them but cut and hold are the biggest thing so make sure you uh pay lots of attention to this right now uh i think this is a good time to pause it right here so don't play it yet so cover three three guys are deep so if it's going to be the half and cut um like that's a free right now but it's either the halves or the corners that are usually deep sometimes it might be like one half on one side then the corner on the other side just to mix it up but we'll look at cut first so cut would mean the corners are low. That's how I draw it. And uh, then the halves are often deep. And these are the three deep guys in the coverage. And on the very basic level, like there's three deep guys. But when you really look at it, what's happening here is... How's that look? That's a bit bad. You, does that show up nice? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yep. Okay, so what really happens here is uh, both halves and both sets of corner are reading two to one. So they both got their eyes on these guys, like when we get into talking about cut and carry right now. And what's happening is that this corner is going to – how would I start? So I'm just drawing this a little bit. Okay, yeah, so when we're playing cut and carry, like corners are low – and pretty much, like, zones usually turn into man, like, at some point. But at the very beginning, for cut especially, like, these guys are both reading two to one. So they're going to watch this receiver. And if he runs up – if he ends up running an out route – I'm just going to clear this out quick. If he ends up running an out route, that's when the corner is going to, you know, stay down, maybe jump it, get a really big hit. Or – if he ends up running in, like, I, I'm not sure where you want me to go with talking about all the different possibilities, but if he runs an in, like, they could just call it off the other side. But at the basics of it, like, the, the corners and halves are usually reading two to one, and the corners are the low man there. Uh, something that your team may or may not do is cut and carry. So just, like, basic cut would be the corners stay low, but cut and carry would be if two and one both run verticals just to make sure that they're covered off then the corner will also stay with him and uh run vertical with him as well so it kind of turns into like a cover four look there um th there's a good amount of different things i could talk about cut with like you know 70 30s and uh different like plays like how you react if he runs like a deep dig or things like that so where would you like to take it for sure so i mean i think just this is a good clip because you see like kind of the two different contours right so Here's our Sam linebacker, our free safety. So this, this is our boundary corner. He's playing low, right? And you talked about reading two to one. His eyes are very clearly on two, right? Mm -hmm. So now when two runs that out, now he sits the out, right? But he, he's running the outbreaker. You'll see the corner's the flat player. He's going to drive an underneath route, and, and the half can then fall on top of the vertical. Here we have the opposite, right? So we got the half is low to this side with the corner playing off. And then in true cover three, that free safety's in the middle of the field. Now, for the most part, I think when you're getting into that conversation about cut and carry, it all stems from the fact that really, and we could talk about double hold because, you know, it's still, you know, I'm sure play at the high school level. And if you're playing oh, a team yeah. that runs the ball a lot, like I'm sure it's it's still, a, you know, a viable coverage if people are running the football, maybe the quarterback play is not as good. But that's when you have both your corners off um, and your half is actually the low player. Now, that, so for both sides, basically both sides would look like this with your half low right and your corner off great if you know you get bubble screens or something in the flat you have your half and your linebackers out there um, but just really tough if you get like the traditional four verticals 
right? Because now your free safety has to play both sides of the field. When you play cut and carry, and really this is going to like lead us into our conversation about cover four, right? And the next clip I have is double cut. So we can kind of take a look at that and then get into cover four. But, you know, here you see the free safety, even though he's playing in the middle of the field, because the ball's on the hash, he's, he's defending the field side, right? He has none of two in the seam. So mm -hmm. playing cut, you're talking about cut and carry. If both these guys go vertical, the boundary half's going to take the inside vertical and the corner is going to have to run uh, mm -hmm. with, with number one. And that's the transition from, okay, it's cover three, but it kind of plays like cover four. If you get that certain vertical, um, you know, and then the hold obviously being the half is low and you don't need, if you get two verticals, you have the free safety in the corner, usually because you're playing cut on the other side. Um, so, you know, you, uh, you broke it down really nicely there in terms of like toggle cut and really hold is like more of a quarters tool now, right? Like no one's playing like double hold. You're playing like half low to one side and playing either the other two guys off or. Um, yeah. With, um, with hold, like even in, high school so, like some teams in the OUA play double hold, like here and there but you usually don't see it in the high school I did see a good amount and I think the biggest thing with hold is the halfbacks disrupting the receiver in front of them for the vertical route because if you yeah. could get a nice jam on them uh, then you know expand it to to where number one is your zone after that but get a nice jam on the receiver to slow them down so the free safety has time to be able to cover both guys and when I was playing Warriors in summer football like we I was at safety and like, I was pretty good at covering uh, like playing hold. Like we played a good amount of double hold and it was because the halfbacks were good at like jamming the receiver, slowing them down. So me as safety was able to cover it up, but think, imagine this, you're playing halfback, you just expand your zone quick you let him run right by you. And the guy on the other side of the field does the same thing. What's the safety going to do? Like there's two guys streaming downfield. So make sure like, if you want to get, you know, recruited, your film notice, make sure you're doing the small things right, getting a nice jam, disrupting the vertical route. And, uh, you know, if there's small things, like if he's not running vertical, if he runs like in a radical route, like you don't have to. But if he's running a vertical route, you better disrupt the route to help out your teammates. 100%. And here you just see double cut, again, more of like a true cover three contour. You got your three deep, uh, your three deep players here. I'm sure what my... My annotations not coming out there. You got your three deep players here, right? And really, you, you end up with five underneath. And who knows? You know, here they could both be playing cut and carry. I've seen teams do that where both corners will carry it, right? Uh, or one of the two corners will carry it. But this is like when we talk, people talk about double cut, right? Both corners are down. So both the corners in this in this sense are playing the flat. Both halves are playing the deep third. Um, you know, that's really all we got to talk through in that clip. And you see it here with like the verticals to the field, right? the halfbacks being high, it keeps it a little easier for the free safety forces, you know, the windows to make the throws are further away, obviously farther throws a more, uh, you know, challenging uh, situation for the quarterback to actually complete. And you see here, the linebackers widening out as well. So like you get in those zone windows right here, they give up the back on the check down, but you really see how playing that, that double cut, both your corners of the flat players, both your halves are the vertical players. Mm -hmm. And if you guys haven't yet, I know a bunch of people have. Uh, help us out, like the video, um, all the normal YouTube stuff. I hate pandering to that, but, um, you know, help us out. The more people like the video, the more people will find it uh, in the algorithm. Uh, and if you haven't yet, uh, subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Um, you know, we're trying to do our best to keep the good content, you know, coming. And, and the more subscribers we have, we're close, getting close to a thousand now, which would be huge for us. So um, now we kind of transition to cover four. And it's funny, like this clip again, looks very similar uh, in terms of it's a hold contour to the field, um, but a, a cut contour in the boundary. And the other thing I really liked about this clip, as you look at it, and we can kind of start talking about different versions of cover four. Um, but this looks a lot like those cover one clips we looked at at the start, right? Pre-snap. You mentioned, you know, changing your alignment, um, you know, based on the snap. You're going to see here this half come down to reroute number two, this half fade into the seam to be able to play one to two vertical. Free safety's got three to the post. And then you've got your, your high player in the boundary. And then this corner, he, you know, people talk about the boundary corner being on the island, right? He's playing that cut and carry technique. So if this guy goes vertical, if his, if his X receiver goes vertical, then he's going to have to play it. So that's kind of how you get to that. You know, the subtle difference between cover three and cover four to me is cover four, the free safety is going to declare to a side and, and cover three, he's got to play down the pipe. He's got to play two, 
two weak to three strong, right? Whereas here, he's really got three strong to two strong uh, mm-hmm. on the vertical. Yeah, like cover three, it's always about the guys, the men you're covering, but uh, cover three, it's a lot more about the people and cover four is more about the landmarks because you know you're going to always have somebody around the number area, the hash, the hash, and the numbers. So like there's just, it's a lot more basic with like the spacing out whenever you play cover four. For sure. And you see here, like you mentioned a great point. And it's funny, the last time we played football in this, in this province, I was coaching uh, OPFL football and the Essex Ravens won the league. Great team, good, really good defense. Um, and uh, they played a ton of double hold. Their halves did a great job of rerouting receivers. And you kind of see that here. It's a little softer. Like he's not, this guy's not playing like super low. Um, this guy looks like a pretty shifty receiver here, but you know, you see him force the outside release, right. Kind of get in the way of that timing, pushing this guy out to the corner, right. Making the corners job easier. Um, Mm -hmm. and then three doesn't go vertical here. So, so two is able to help out. But the thing I really liked about this clip is you can really see where you're trying to force the football right in a, in a hold contour. Okay. Go throw this deep out and the half is going to push like crazy to get underneath it. Right. And you see the half, you know, that's a long throw and it's a long throw with a guy rallying to the football, right? Like, I don't think, even though this corner is playing off, right. If I'm this quarterback, I better be getting the ball out right now. He resets, right. If this ball gets thrown, that's pick six the other way. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with cover for us or, you know, some coverages you, lots of times you give up like the, the short route to the field side, just because it's the longest road to get there. And, you know, sure. offenses don't want to throw it. They want to throw it deep and get big plays. That, and that's the main reason why a lot of people run cut in the boundary, right? Like that, that's, you know, if you play cut in the boundary, you can play hold to the field. It's a super long throw. But if you play hold to the, to the boundary now, right, you can take that little stop route for six, eight yards. And then, you know, somebody's best receiver has the ball six yards downfield. You actually got to get them on the ground. Right, it's it's a high percentage play. Um, yeah. that- and the thing is, too, if you're playing, like, say you're playing cut. Can you go back to the start of this clip, please? Yep. It's one thing. I don't think we've really mentioned it yet, but uh, if you're playing hold here, then this inside defender only has to doesn't really have to move at all. But if you're playing cut on this side, you know, he's gonna be off. So this inside defender, he sees pass and he wants to expand out there. He's got a longer way to go here so it's just one thing like if you're playing safety and you rotate it down you're playing half or linebacker even uh just be wary like if there's a guy outside you and hold you don't have to move it as far if it's a cut you got to get out there a lot quicker and expand to that zone 100 percent. now you know we talk, well, well there's a couple more clips to cover four here um but this is kind of a good like blank canvas i guess to talk about you know variations of cover four so we talked about cover three or three deep guys i think if people have been listening to this they get the theme that you know cover four we're gonna have four deep defenders uh, but if you want to kind of draw on this and talk about you know how like what are some other versions of cover four like we just looked at the boundary corner the boundary half the free safety and the field corner being your four vertical guys but like what are some other common versions right so you got Corner, half, free safety, corner, half, and then Sam is what most people play with as, you know, their DBs, depending on the personnel on that. So between that, you could have really any combination, and I might as well draw them out quickly. So say the boundary corner sits, you could have half on the numbers, safety, half, corner. You could have both corners sit, and then have half on the numbers, safety your sam drops and then a half out here you can do the same thing with both halves staying low you know corners on numbers safety here sam drops uh you could even drop your will but you know aside from dropping the sam you could bring the free safety into the box too or just stay here as like a robber and then have your um corners and halves off so there's a good amount of different ways to play it and, you know, the more you got, the more you could confuse the offense and better chance that you get for uh, making plays. So the more you know as a DB, like you want to be able to play all the different positions and understand it. You'll always hear coaches say, if you're just playing corner, you got to know what this guy does. And it's true. Like when you go to the next level, maybe you're a uh, backup and like he gets hurt and he gets hurt. So you have to jump in here. So you just got to know what everyone does. And it uh, just all makes sense there. Like if it's cover four, four guys are going to be deep who's short, who's deep, 
talk to him before the play and it's pretty much the process of all of it. Yeah. And we just got a good question about when you, you, when you'd use each coverage, but one other point I want to make is like, no matter what the variation, you're going to have one of these four jobs. And it kind of depends whether you have a three receiver service, two receiver service, obviously one receiver service gets a little different, but you know, if you have a two receiver service, you're going to have three coverage players. If you have a three, a three receiver service, you're going to need four, right? Cause in every quarter's coverage, you're going to have some sort of like outside vertical player, some sort of like, like on the numbers, right? You're going to have somebody play in the hash. I call it playing the post. You're going to have your flat player and you're going to have your wall player, right? And between those four, you're going to be able to handle the three routes from the three receivers. So for example, if you get like four vertical, right? Well, now your corner might still have to deal with two routes, right? Or over here on the three receiver side, okay, if we get, you know, we're going to have our post player, we're going to, and now have our, our wall player. And the reason, you know, some people say, okay, we're going to play cut and carry, and he kind of becomes your flat player and your numbers player, or this guy will play off and say, Hey, you're going to be the numbers player. And now the will, right. Has to play from the curl through the flat. Right. Whatever side, if you're three on two, right, you're going to have to have someone with two jobs. If you're four on three, you might have someone who might have to deal with multiple verticals. Um, So when you talk about like moving guys around, like, for example, you know, we could say, hey, let's have our Sam go high, push our free safety down. Right. And now our Mike's got to be the wall player. Our safety is the post player. Our half is the flat player and our corners, the the outside numbers player. Right now on this side, your half becomes the flat player your corner becomes the uh, the numbers player. And now you can rotate your free safety to become the hash player on the other side. So um, I think uh, coach or Rob Smith, you posted there. Can you briefly explain what situations you'd use the different coverages in? Let's just watch our last clip just because it shows a couple of these variations. Um, and then we'll get into that because that's a great question. So here, you know, you see it's a, the only real difference. It's still a hold contour to the field is now you're getting, okay, this corner isn't playing cut and carry. Right. So it looks like I can't see this. This is just a first and 10. Right. So you get your hash player, numbers player. And now the will, instead of just being the wall player, he's got to play the wall through the flat. Right. So he's basically the only difference is now if you get vertical out, right, the will's got to chase the out instead of the corner traps the out. Basically, is, is your big difference there in how right. they play out. So again, you see here really clearly you get your four vertical players. Okay. And your four underneath guys. And then this one here, it's just different. All right. Now to the field, it's a cut contour, right? So, you know, we're kind of using cut and hold as both like cover three and cover four. It depends on like how you teach it. Right. But your cover three, it, it's still saying who the flat player is in the coverage. Right. So here it's cut our corners play in the flat our halves play in the numbers. Now they got to reduce split. So he's not all out to the numbers, but your free safety is playing the post boundary corners play in the numbers. Boundary half is playing the backside uh, hash mark. So same as the last clip on the backside, but just flip to the front side. Right. And this is a, this is a great example too. You see this linebacker here. We haven't talked a ton about linebackers, but his guy immediately goes out. So he doesn't hang on it. He doesn't look back at the quarterback. He finds his next target. Like you talked about finding landmarks and versus finding, you know, players. And I think sometimes linebackers, there's so much space to cover. Great coaching point is just find the next guy, like get to the next threat. You know, if you've let this guy go, don't kind of hang out in no man's land. Go take away the space. Cause now right. you see, okay, you got these two guys running these routes and this is, you know, covered down, covered down. This guy's in a great situation to play 70, 30 and drive this as it comes out. Um, you know, and ultimately quarterbacks got to hold the ball and, uh, and takes a sack. Um, I just, uh, that just reminded me of a, always a great tip to bring up. If you see, and, uh, any clip really would work, but I'll, I'll, I'll run it back to the same one there. All right, perfect. Oh, I ran by it. So, you know, as a defense as a player of football, you probably get, really hungry and you just want to hit guys all the time, but sometimes it's best to wait off and not hit them right away. So if you're in a zone and say like, you know, you're this linebacker and you're in this area and there's a guy who runs into your zone. I know it's not the exact coverage right now. I'm just drawing it out, but you might want to just jump down right to it right away and get, try to line yourself up for a big hit or pick. But the thing is in football, oftentimes 
they're trying to throw something behind you. So usually as linebackers, wherever you see something in front of you, it's just because they're trying to squeeze something in behind you also. So don't jump down to it right away. The term we always use is leverage it. So like stay in between, wait off. And then when you see the ball start to get thrown, then you go after him. Especially, you know, especially here, right, as this guy's he's the wall player, this goes right to the flat. You know, both these guys are looking at this guy going, hey, we know that this route is either going to go in or out because if they're running this guy to the flat, you know, they're, they're like you said, they're trying to window shop somebody in behind and second and eight, make them throw this. And you see here, like, he doesn't throw it, right? And and it's such a such an under underappreciated thing. And I did uh, – our, we're doing fundamental Fridays now on our, on our social media. And we did one on 70, 30 technique, which is basically, you know, leverage it. Same idea uh, of, you know, Hey, let's take away the vertical first and be in a position to drive on the underneath route. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a great example. So we've talked about cover zero. We talked about cover one. We've talked about cover two, man. Um, you know, we've talked about, uh, we've talked about cover three variations and, and cover four variations. Um, you know, what to you, like, when is, when is the best time to use those coverages? So question in the chat, you know, when are you looking to use those coverages um, based on, you know, game plan or whatever it is? Like when, when's your go-to time to use cover one? When are you more likely to play cover four? That type of stuff. So I think a big thing is knowing what you're expecting from the offense and then also knowing your players. Like if you hypothetically, like if you had a great defense, you could man it up all the time that frees up your linebackers in the middle to like play in the box more. And that'd be great. But you got to know like what you're expecting from the offense and know your players. So if you're expecting like lots of corner outs, maybe it's good to call cut because then you have like a corner out there to kind of help with 70, 30. If you're called, if you're expecting like lots of posts, maybe like it's good to call cover one or cover three, just because you have the player in the middle there. So I think it's really about the, the coaches or like players like watching film and knowing what to expect other than kind of planning, like, what do we have that could cover this concept really good? And what I've noticed coaches like to do is like drop the route combinations, look at like how often they run it, like what times of the game they run it. And then like, you know, based on your calls, like that's how you're probably going to script a game to make your calls for what your, the type of coverages are. 